Recent Immigration Case Statistics and Approval Data Hello everyone, welcome to New Wyoming Law Group's YouTube channel. Today we'll present our analysis on immigration data recently released by the U.S. federal government, including the total numbers of immigration petitions filed, approved, denied, and remain pending for the first quarter of fiscal year 2020, which were recently published by the USCIS. Here's our analysis of the data. First, employment-based immigration petitions, both I-140 and I-485, still have relatively high approval rates. In the first quarter of fiscal year 2020, 30,575 I-140 petitions were approved, while 2,676 petitions were denied. In other words, the percentage of approval calculated by dividing the total number of approved I-140 petitions with the sum of approved I-140 cases and denied I-140 cases is 92%. This is a fairly good number, indicating that most I-140 employment-based immigration petitions are, indeed, approved by the USCIS. This means if you have a reliable employer that sponsors your green card application through PERM, EB1B, or EB1C, or if you have a suitable case for self-petitioned EB1A or NIW I-140, the likelihood of approval remains high. Similarly, for employment-based I-485 adjustment of status applications, 41,884 cases were approved in that corner, and only 1,804 were denied. The percentage of approval is a whopping 96%. What does this mean? When your employment-based I-140 immigration petition is approved, usually you can rest assured that the I-485 adjustment of status applications for you and your family will also be approved, except in some rare or extreme cases, such as past criminal record, severe violation of immigration law, etc. Second, family-based immigration petitions are also doing fine, even though there are more denials in this category. For I-130 petitions, there were 192,451 approvals in this quarter and 21,933 denials. The approval rate is around 90%. For family-based I-485 adjustment of status applications, there were 76,922 approvals and 13,884 denials, and the percentage of approval is 85%. For I-129F, Petition for Alien Fiancé, the approval rate is only 78%. Third, the approval rate for work visa applications such as H-1B is not so good. There were 120,669 I-129 petition approvals in this quarter and 41,295 denials. The approval rate is 74.5%. Fourth, for the I-539 application for change of visa status or extension of visa status in the United States, including B-2, F-1, F-2, H-4, J-2, O-3, L-2, etc., there were 44,678 approvals and 9,851 denials. The approval rate is 82%. Finally, for EB-5 investment-based immigration, the pace of processing was quite slow in this quarter. For I-526 petitions, there were 383 approvals, 72 denials, 4,264 new cases received, and 17,468 cases remaining pending. For I-829 application, which is usually filed two years after receiving the conditional green card based on EB-5, 436 cases were approved, while 10,373 cases remain pending. If this pace continues, it may take many quarters for currently pending investment-based green card applications to be processed. Therefore, if you can apply family-based immigration, employer-sponsored immigration, or self-petition EB1A or NIW, consider yourself lucky, as you not only save a lot of money, since EB5 now requires $900,000 or higher in investment, and also save a lot of waiting time for your green card. This is our analysis of the most recent immigration data published by the USCIS. The calculation of approval rates can be tricky because cases approved in this quarter may be received a long time ago, while cases newly received in this quarter are often not adjudicated in the same quarter. The USCIS usually uses the method of dividing the total number of approved cases by the sum of approved cases and denied cases in the same period, so this is also the formula that we use here. If you have other questions or want to receive a free evaluation of your background for immigration or visa application, please contact us at info at nwmlaw.com. Thank you.